Hey, it's Ollie, and today I want to talk about uh, reading and two different kinds of reading that we often refer to. One is intensive reading and the other is extensive reading. Okay, so intensive and extensive reading. And often people ask, well, which one is better? And of course the answer is neither, they, they, are, they are different. So I'd like to talk about these a little bit and uh, hopefully give you some ideas about how you might uh, look at the reading you're doing in your foreign language a little bit differently. So let's start with intensive reading. Now, as the, as the name, as the word suggests, intensive reading is when you're reading intensively. And what that means specifically is that you're looking at every single word and you're reading for detail. Okay. Now, we would typically do this in a textbook. Uh, in any language textbook, you know, you're often given a, a dialogue of people speaking or maybe a, a descriptive text of some kind. And you're probably going to be asked to, prov to answer some questions. And so you're going to need to read that text in some detail. And so we call this intensive reading. Um, it's usually something that's done when we want to look at the specifics of a language. Okay, so it could be like, what's you know, the meanings of certain words, the use of grammar in a particular context, um, lots of different possibilities. But intensive reading is when we're looking at understanding and analyzing the language so that we can better understand it ourselves. Now let's compare this to extensive reading, which is totally different. Extensive reading is essentially reading for pleasure. This is where you will take a book, for example, and simply read that book uh, over the course of a number of days or weeks or months or, or whatever it may be. The main point about extensive reading is that we are not doing those things that I just covered for intensive reading. So we are not uh, looking up every word. We are not trying to learn, learn um, particular grammar points. We are not um, look, doing a study of, of word order, for example. We're not doing any of these things. The whole point of extensive reading is that we are trying to get as much exposure as possible to the language. And the benefit of this is that over time, with enough consumption of language, it starts to become normal. And so they're two very, very different strategies. And uh, it's, if you understand the difference between those, that kind of gives you the option to strategically choose the way that you want to set about doing your, your reading. Now, most people, if, uh, if you kind of look at the way that you're learning your target language right now, especially if you're taking lessons or classes, you, you're probably gonna find that almost all of the reading that you currently do is intensive. So you probably pick up a textbook or a, I don't know, a short story or whatever it may be, and you probably kind of look and you try to understand every word, you're really trying hard to study the language as it were. That is the kind of reading that most students or learners of a language will do. Um, so in many respects, like that almost doesn't need mentioning because it's almost certain that that's what you spend most of your time doing. Um, now, if you think about how much of your time you spend doing extensive reading, which is reading for pleasure, whether it's reading your favorite blog or reading, uh, reading a novel, or reading a magazine, or reading a book of, of, uh, of short stories, then you may or may not fight. I, I would I'm going to guess that you don't do much of that. And so um, that is you know, one question that you should definitely ask yourself is, well, could I be doing more of that and how would it help me? Now, um, obviously, uh, intensive reading is good if you have got specific things you want to learn. But the main benefit of extensive reading is that you just, it's one of the best ways to naturally learn a language. I find that Extensive reading starts to become most useful when you're kind of around an in intermediate or higher level in a language. Once you, you've got a good foundation, you know enough words, you kind of understand the grammar and how the language is used. At that point, active, detailed study of the language stops, like, stops becoming so important because there is endless details that you can go off and, and, uh, and study for. Right? There's always more words you can learn. There's always more weird, archaic grammar you can study. But for every hour, kind of above the intermediate or upper intermediate level, for every hour of study you put in, the fewer returns you get back, the less useful that study is, because you're studying stuff that's just simply not that common and that you're not gonna be able to use yourself. So we call this diminishing returns. And so at that point, I always say that the, the most effective way for you to continue studying your target language is to actually immerse yourself in it. Spend time surrounded by native speakers, watch movies, uh, read books, and read books in particular is something that you can do for pleasure and for fun. And it just gives you a way to consume the language and to 
to, it gives you a way for the language to become normal, for you to get used to the language. That's extensive reading, and uh, it's one of the most powerful things you can do. Obviously, easier in some languages. It's going to be easier in Spanish than it will be in Chinese, for obvious reasons. Um, but nevertheless, as a long-term language uh, learning strategy, you've got to be doing extensive reading. You're going to learn the. You're going to learn more and perfect your language skills more doing that than with anything else. Okay, hope that was helpful and that's given you some food for thought and I'll see you in the next video.